Jimmy Garoppolo is still a 49er. Jimmy Garoppolo, as of right now, is still a 49er. And as of tomorrow and the day after that, he will be a 49er because him and the 49ers agreed to restructure his contract that ends all the trade rumors that we've been talking about here on this very damn show. Makes him the highest paid backup in the NFL. Will San Francisco regret keeping Jimmy G? And Zach, won't you kick us off? Yeah, well, so I have a bunch of thoughts here that came to mind. I think it's a super intriguing topic. Let's get into it. So the first thought for me is that immediately, I think Jimmy Garoppolo has become the best backup quarterback in the NFL. This guy has won big games. I think you and I are both on the same page. We think he's a top 20 quarterback in the NFL. And honestly, uh, putting into account the value of the quarterback position and knowing that Jimmy Garoppolo has won with this group of 49ers before, six and a half million is a great deal. And I think that immediately becomes one of the best contracts in the NFL. And I wanted to give credit to Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch because Throughout their time with San Francisco, they've done a great job dealing with issues and weird things going on off the field. If you remember, the year after they lost to Kansas City in the Super Bowl, them and DeForest Buckner were in some ugly contract negotiations. It wasn't working out. It was a weird, uncomfortable situation. They trade him to the Colts for a first round pick. And then a year later, they get back to the NFC Championship game. We look at this offseason, Debo Samuel literally requested a trade. He said, I don't want to be a 49er anymore. But even though Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch were really upset about it, they were clearly mad. They never said anything bad about him. They found a way to get him to OTAs. He held in and eventually they worked it out. And now Debo has his money. He's back on the field uh, kicking ass. And then you look at this situation. It's crazy because in practice, Jimmy Garoppolo has just been out here on these mini fields throwing to random guys And he's on the team, but he wasn't really on the team. And I just wonder, like, how many other quarterbacks in the NFL, especially with Jimmy Garoppolo's resume, a guy that has won a ton of football games, would have been willing to do this, would have been able to cooperate in this situation and agree to this? Because if I was Jimmy Garoppolo, the first day of the offseason, I would have said, trade me. I don't want to be here anymore. I want to be at a place where I could start and be uh, the guy to lead another team to a Super Bowl. Now, the question is, do the 49ers still believe in Trey Lance? I think they believe in his potential, but we all know potential is nothing proven. It's a big question mark. We know this guy is physically gifted. I think he's done a good job understanding the offense. But right now, he has one clear flaw. He's not accurate. He has struggled with his accuracy in the preseason. And I do think if the 49ers were 100 thousand percent sold on Trey Lance being the guy like Patrick Mahomes was right away when he uh, took over for Alex Smith in Kansas City, Jimmy Garoppolo would be traded and he would not be a 49er. But I don't blame Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers for saying, okay, if we're not a thousand percent sold on Trey Lance uh, and Jimmy Garoppolo is here and he's willing to be here and he's willing to cooperate, then I give him a lot of credit. It's almost like he has a little bit of Belichick in him where he is willing to go against the flow, even though it looks it looks a little weird because he wants to do whatever it takes to win. One last point I'll make, Kyle Shanahan, I consider him one of the five best coaches in the NFL, but weirdly enough, he's only had two winning seasons since he got to San Francisco. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that he's suffered a lot of injuries at the quarterback position. In 2018, Jimmy Garoppolo tears his ACL week two. The 49ers season completely ends, and that's how they end up getting Nick Bosa. You even look at two years ago during the 2020 COVID season, no team suffered more injuries uh, than the 49ers, and then they come back and, uh, this year and get all the way to the NFC Championship game. I don't think Kyle Shanahan is looking to take any risks at injury when it comes to the quarterback position because Jimmy Garoppolo and Trey Lance were both hurt last year. They both missed time with injuries. And uh, once again, even though the situation looks a little weird, I give Kyle Shanahan credit for keeping Jimmy G because he knows that they'll make the situation work. And I do not think they'll regret it. I think it was a good decision. I really do. Yeah, I'm going to respectfully disagree, you know, and I can see some of the arguments that you made. I'm not going to just totally dismiss that. But when you talk about the quarterback, you know, I think a base salary of six point five million guaranteed as a back quarterback. And it's not even about the finances where I'm getting at here. It's all about Trey Lance. When you have a quarterback who is your highest paid backup in the league, got your team to a Super Bowl and an NFC Championship game, and it's still on your roster, now it just signifies that Trey Lance is under the most pressure of any quarterback 
going into this season. You know, I understand about the cost of Winston's of the world bouncing around like a hot tamale. I understand Russell Wilson went to Denver to win a championship and it's a championship or a bust. Sort of like Matthew Stafford going to the Rams. I understand when you look at Deshaun Watson, all the allegations, you know, but there's no pressure there. Kyler Murray. He's coming back 11 games after Kyler Murray. There's a lot of pressure over there. Dak Prescott. What had the Cowboys done this offseason of substance? A lot of pressure. But this move right here just signifies to me that Trey Lance is under the most pressure. And it's his second year. And I'm not sure I'm feeling that. Because, Claire, they already got a talented roster. It's not like it's anything from a personnel standpoint. They have the personnel for Trey Lance to succeed. They have George Kittle in the middle. That's one of the best tight ends. All could be the best tight end in the league because of what he can do outside of catching the football. Right, Debo Samuel, what he can do outside of his position. So many guys that does more than what their position says they can do. And... That's a testament to this team. Even the guy, Yushek, right? Him, Brandon Ayuk. They got so much talent defensively talented over there. Coach, they got him a coach. Even though structurally, personnel-wise, they had put him in a great, great situation. Gave him that year to redshirt in the NFL. That guy, having that guy there. If Trey Lance is going to struggle, right? Because I assume his season is going to come with some highs and some lows. Some bumps and bruises and some cruising, Right? If you are losing games and he's struggling, it's hard for me to not believe that Kyle Shanahan is going to flock to the guy $6.5 million base salary guaranteed, got you to a Super Bowl, got you to an NFC Championship game. It's hard for me to see him not pivoting to that guy. And you can say, well, that's an insurance policy, right? Well, that's actually insurance killing your insurance because you – Drafted up and traded up to draft Trey Lance. Let's not forget about the capital and investment that they made for this guy. So, yeah, in most terms, you will want a quarterback that could come in relief. And you can say, all right, this guy suck. Take him out. Put him in. Boom. Nah, you invested this money. I mean, this draft capital where you pass guys like Kyle Pitts and Jamar Chase and all them guys over there. Because you believed that this guy was going to take you there. You believed that Jimmy Garoppolo wasn't good enough or healthy and durable enough. I'm not sure if I want to put all that pressure on Trey Lance. And that's the only reason why I don't like this move. Well, the main reason. Yeah, it's interesting because we've been talking about the 49ers selection of Trey Lance literally months before that draft even happened. I remember you and I doing a segment on the show debating if they should take uh, Trey Lance or Mac Jones. It's been a long time. And the 49ers, what made them unique was they were the only team in that draft that took a quarterback I guess you could put the Patriots in in this category too, but that we're ready to win right away. But unlike the Patriots, like they had realistic Super Bowl expectations and they came really close last year. And I think when you look at Trey Lance this year, right, even though he didn't play last year, this is technically year two. So he only has two more years left of that rookie contract. This is the situation any young quarterback dreams for with an elite head coach in Kyle Shanahan. With elite weapons, everything you said, right? And honestly, the thing that makes the 49ers unique is that I think realistically, if things go well at the quarterback position, they're good enough to win the Super Bowl this year. And with Trey Lance, if he flops so badly that the 49ers even think about pivoting to Jimmy Garoppolo, like I think that could be a signal just because of the situation the 49ers are in. They're Super Bowl or bust this year. I don't think Kyle Shanahan is going to want to use the time of – playing Trey Lance like the whole season if he's not good enough like see, like I'm not saying they're gonna bench him if like he struggles a little bit but I'm just saying like if he just is a complete bust and, and and craps the bed the 49ers could pivot to Jimmy Garoppolo and we've seen the 49ers win in the postseason with Jimmy Garoppolo I think it's a good insurance policy considering that it seems like they know both guys in that quarterback room well enough that they think they're they're pros and they're willing to deal with it and also If Trey Lance takes the Bulls by the horn and becomes great, then that's good for the 49ers for two reasons. One, they obviously have their franchise quarterback and they should be one of the better teams in the NFL. And also, maybe they could trade uh, Jimmy Garoppolo later in the season to a team that needs a quarterback. Maybe his value in eight weeks is a little higher. I would say it would just be a bad look. I don't even want to think about that alternative of them having to pivot back to Jimmy G because that would just make everything a mess in the sense that of the just – well, Everything. Trey Lance is a bust then. But that's the they, thing, though. If the, but the 49ers, right? Like, they're they trying invested to win too much. this year. They, they, they invested too much. And if Jimmy Garoppolo don't take them, the only best scenario is that they win a Super Bowl. 
with Trey Lance or Jimmy G. That that's best case scenario. They have to win the Super Bowl, right? Because Jimmy Garoppolo got them there and got them close there, right? That that that's what makes it so much pressure is that you don't have room if you're Trey Lance to really kind of just um get into the flow of the games that you're playing in immediately. I mean, the NFC West is it's not as great as it was before, but you still got the Rams in there. They just won a Super Bowl. You still got some, you know, the Rams. Who else you got? The Cardinals are a pretty good team when I mean, they hot. So there's a lot of pressure. And I'm not sure that Trey Lance can handle that. It's different because, you know, sometimes when you're in certain franchises, they, it comes with more pressure, right? It comes with luxury when you win in those places, but a lot of pressure. The 49ers fans show up. They show out. I'm not sure if, if Trey Lance can handle that. We're all on the same page. If like the, the hope is that Trey Lance shows out, balls out, and the 49ers just don't even have to ever think about uh, pivoting. And it's to crazy GBC. because we played in a lot of what ifs, right? So we might as well continue on that what if path that we're on. What if Jimmy Garoppolo gets hurt? Because that's been a theme. Isn't that the reason why they kind of went for Trey Lance? It, was, it wasn't about the um, wins and losses. My man, Jimmy Garoppolo right now, has a higher winning percentage as a starter over Aaron Rodgers, the back-to-back -back MVP. Let's not forget that. The guy is a winner. But that wasn't the issue, right? It was about durability. Now, let's say they take out Trey Lance. They throw in Jimmy Garoppolo there. He gets hurt again. It happened last year. That's the reason why they have no trade partner for him. So it wasn't Kyle Shanahan was forced kind of to do this because they didn't want to, like, release him. But at the same time, if you are going to go in, in your mind, you that's a bold move. Trading up to draft anybody that high with that pick is a bold move. You have to be sure. You have to be certain that that's your guy and don't have no if, ands, or buts and what ifs. You have to go full throttle with that. And I think the hesitation is what's going to hurt this team. I think this team has a perfect opportunity as far as what they have talent wise and ready to win now. But just that hesitation is how you get burned and how you get hit by a car when you're crossing the street. So I think also, too, I, I want to kind of like turn this a little bit, staying in this topic. Because you mentioned a point in your first lap that I don't want to forget. Before to... you get into this, though, I just want to say quickly, going Go back to the selection of Trey Lance, like the the quarterbacks I know that Kyle Shanahan have wanted and have really liked. We saw the work he did with Matt Ryan, and he wanted Kirk Cousins a few off seasons ago, like really badly before they got Jimmy G. He was ready to to give Kirk Cousins the bank. Like I just wonder, like Mac Jones, if he would have ended up in San Francisco, like could have he could he have been that guy? For Kyle Shannon, because I agree with you, like it was a risky move pivoting off of Jimmy G and giving up three first round picks to trade up to the number three overall pick. But it's like if you took a complete bust, which for what like maybe that that could be Trey Lance, like that's obviously a disaster. And Mac Jones, while he may not have been the best and most high ceiling quarterback in that draft, like I would have liked that fit. Mac Jones playing for a coach like Kyle Shanahan and maybe being that Matt Ryan or Kirk Cousins that Kyle's really always wanted in San Francisco. Yeah, I mean, look, it's hard to say no to that. Matt Jones got that Patriots team to the playoffs, so I'm pretty sure he could have done it. I actually think, you know, Zay made a good point when he talked about, you know, firsthand what they was able to do with Colin Kaepernick, the explosiveness. Yeah, he had his issues, you know, as far as just he wasn't the most polished pass of the football, but they got to a Super Bowl with him, right? So they looking at Trey Lance as a richer version of Colin Kaepernick. So I think some some of these guys, they want to pivot. Though, quickly, to that, the 49ers, that running... they traded Alex Smith like after they saw Kaepernick play a few games because they knew, okay, like this is the guy. That's the problem. Like, and they just gave up too much for him, for them not to do that, for not, for them not to get rid of Jimmy G. But that's just how I see it. I, I just don't have that type of money to be spending out here like that. But I think you made a point that I want to touch on in your first lap when you said that Jimmy Garoppolo could have said, you know, trade me. He could have got on. He could have, yeah, requested a trade after literally being shown the door after playing through the injuries that he played with. You see, this is why I always take Jimmy Garoppolo over Baker Mayfield, right? I always will because the locker room, just the, the overall personality of the person and the guy's a more proven winner. But, you know, we'll get to that in a second. I think Baker's situation with Cleveland, it's kind of the same thing, right? Baker, a lot of people gave him his props because he played with a tore up shoulder. Same thing as Jimmy G, right? And they went to Deshaun Watson to try to trade for Deshaun Watson. Then he was like, listen, I'm out. Get me out of here. 
it's not going to happen. I thought, and I said on the record, and I still feel this way, that Baker Mayfield could have benefited from one last partnership with the Browns in the sense that he could have raised his trade stock and got to a better situation than his current one. Yeah, he's looked good in the training camps, right, in the preseason. I'm not going to lie. He, he definitely looks much better and poised in the training camps. I'm not sure how long that's going to last, right, this preseason, right? I'm not sure, but I got to give him his props there. But at the same time, we all know Carolina's roster. We all know their offensive line. We all know their defense that has lost guys. We all know they're at least coming in three and four in that division. He could have benefited from raising his stock to the point where both parties could have benefited. You look at Jimmy Garoppolo, no shame, my brother. I'm just going to do my thing. And, and that's why good things happen to people like that in the long term. So um, we'll see what happens with Jimmy Garoppolo's future. Yeah, so it's interesting. I I, I would agree. Like I would, Jimmy Garoppolo, I, I'm taking him over Baker Mayfield. And I do think the locker room dynamic has a little bit to do with that. It's just a little different, though. Like, I think Jimmy Garoppolo, looking back at his time with San Francisco, like, there are a lot of good memories. It's clear he loves Kyle Shanahan. Like Kyle Shanahan loves him. And like, I don't think Jimmy G ever wanted to leave San Francisco. He felt comfortable there. Um, but when it comes to Baker Mayfield, like it was kind of clear that he just needed a change of scenery. And I think like long-term that was the best for both sides. And I'm just trying my best to put myself in his shoes. Like, Moving on from him is one thing, but moving on for, from him for a quarterback with the baggage and the reputation of Deshaun Watson, like, I understand it. And, like, the Deshaun Watson thing, everything going on with his background, like, it's just something we've never seen with a franchise quarterback, especially with the contract he got. Uh, like, literally, like, it's one thing to draft your replacement, but the Cleveland Browns, like, literally did whatever they can to bring in a guy with that baggage and gave him a ton of money. Like it, it just became clear, like, okay, like enough's enough. Baker was, I mean, it, it's an interesting, money. it's an interesting dynamic. And that's why I'm glad we bring it this up because it's a good dynamic to talk about. I would argue in Jimmy G's defense, Cal Shanahan was losing games before he came around, bro. Like the guy was a loser. Like, yeah, we know he was scheming guys open. I get it. You can look at the X's and O's and say that he was scheming guys open. But every time Jimmy Garoppolo was not there, he lost. Like when um Nick, I think it was Nick Mullins. One of those guys might have been Nick Mullins. I might be wrong. DJ Beathard. Like, how could anyone win with those guys, though? But I'm know? saying, like, like, even in, like, relief, for example, Bill Belichick did it. He won with Jacoby Brissett, Jimmy Garoppolo, and relief um, Castle when they went 11-5. and five. Bill Belichick does it. Because it's not a long season, like when these guys are hurt. We talking about replacement, not replacement, but placeholders for a couple games. Kyle Shanahan can't even win a game with a placeholder, right? Every time without Jimmy Garoppolo, he's lost pretty much. Jimmy Garoppolo saved him pretty much, got his team to a Super Bowl, gave him a 10-point lead, and he coached the game away. And the defense gave the game away. And he gave that team again another shot to get to the Super Bowl. One of the um, defenders dropped the ball in an interception, a potential game with an interception. So for him to say, I'm going to, you know, agree to this and put my ego aside because I think it possibly could work out for Jimmy G. I think Jimmy G is the biggest winner here, him and the Seattle Seahawks. And the reason why I say so is because Seattle now could bottom out with Geno Smith and get their quarterback of the future. Right. Think about it. The Colts. Every year, give a pick for an uh, aging quarterback that's not going to get them far. And now they're doing the same thing over again instead of getting their quarterback of the future and bottoming out. The Falcons, they actually are lucky because they could have bottomed out with Matt Ryan. They got uh, Marcus Mariota as a placeholder for Desmond Ritter, who they got in the later rounds, who's actually going to be a kid. That dude's going to be a dude in the future. And they was able to snag one of the generational prospects and Cal Pitts along with that. So now that guy got weapons. So I think if you're Seattle and you're Jimmy Garoppolo, you're the biggest winners here for those reasons. Yeah. And it's going to be interesting to see. I, I agree with you on Seattle. I wouldn't be shocked if uh, they'd be picking top five. I know we mentioned the Giants too, as a team uh, that could be in that conversation. And it's weird because I actually think like Jimmy G could have been a decent fit for the Giants if they're trying to win. But I, but we don't think, trying to w going all in and win uh, this year is necessarily the best thing long-term and they still have Daniel Jones. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where he ends up if anywhere. And if he plays another down for the 49ers again, because I remember a few months ago talking about this on the show, like I think it was the first, it was the day after they lost to the Rams in the NFC championship game. And Jimmy G just goes up to the podium and he's like, it's been real guys. 
it's been a great run. And he had that look in his eyes like he was about to cry. And it really felt like that was going to be the end of Jimmy G with San Francisco. And really, this came out of nowhere yesterday. It's a reminder that we wa- we could watch uh, a lot of reality television. It's scripted. We know it when we watch it, but not the NFL, not pro sports. And uh, each time something like this happens, it's a bomb. It's nothing better. And ladies and gentlemen, we dropping more bombs on the show with our next couple of topics. So stay tuned. Keep it locked. We'll be back.